I'd like to ask each of the doctors to stand up and introduce themselves and tell us what you do. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. I am Randall Brickshaw. Uh, I'm actually a family medicine doctor, but I mostly do administrative stuff. I'm the <coughs> chief medical officer for the Hill Country Region for Scott Mike. Thank you guys very much. I'm Beverly Grimshaw. I'm one of the medical directors for Scott and White Health Plans. So I'm kind of on the other side than most of these guys here. But if you have any questions about the health plan, I'd be glad to talk to you about that. Or I kind of know quite a bit about <laughs> the um, health clinic side, too, so I can hopefully answer some of those questions. But thanks for having us. Thank you. I'm Paul Cook, I'm uh, Corey Williams, podiatry. Mansell Harris, urology. Uh, Rodney Lane, pain management and anesthesia in the hospital. Brian Mansell, dermatology. Okay, there's one young Aggie I forgot over here. <laughs> so you know he's educated, he's a good guy. He went to Texas a and But he's one of the rookies, class of 91. That's right. Brian, right, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Brian Harrison. I'm a, many of you saw my name tag. I'm a in philanthropy, and I, know, I guess everybody knows what philanthropy is, but uh, uh, I'm one of the people, the, found, the Scott White Foundation is tasked with raising a lot of money to uh, build the buildings and all that, and try to, I mean, the whole goal, obviously, throughout the Scott White system is to try to increase access for patients, um, as far as just building clinics and having more accessible to the patients, but also, you know, the locations, and uh, uh, just real quick story, and I'll, and I'll, I'll let Rainer take over, but, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, somebody one of our donors uh, out here uh, not so long ago, and they were saying how special it is to finally get a hospital to come out here. And you know, you're thinking, you know, well, there's hospitals everywhere, you put up hospitals, but uh, one, I think one of the unique things about this community and the community's out this way is the fact that, uh, you know, it seems like a lot of people come out here and it's a beautiful area and they retire out here. But what starts happening is, is all of a sudden they have these great communities, all friends, but then people have to start moving away because they want to be moved closer to healthcare. So I thought, what a tragedy that, uh, you know, you have all these great friends out here and then they have to move back to Houston or Dallas or Austin because they need to uh, get health care. So, uh, so from the foundation point of view, I'm very excited that I'm seeing buildings go up and I'm seeing uh, this health care service come out to you guys. So if you guys ever have any questions, just to give you a contact person from the foundation point of view, Stacy Page, uh, she has a, we have a Marble Falls or a Horseshoe Bay office uh, right out here. and. Uh, my, myself, Brian Harrison, Jeremy Casanda is one of the guys that's down here in here today. Tom Sloan, John Hyde, and our vice president of our organization is uh, Brian Herbie. So these are names. If you have any questions, we can answer them uh, about what's going on, or we can get you in contact with the right people who can uh, answer questions for you. So I encourage you to just pick up any of the brochures or anything. The doctors uh, are on the uh, handouts and uh, just a little information about uh, what's going on out here. So thank you. Now, after the presentation that Bramer's going to do, there are handouts up here. It's got all the doctors, their pictures, so you can remember them for being here, and uh, also a lot of other information. So, without further ado, Bramer, it's all here. Well, good evening. So, full disclaimer, I moved from San Antonio two months ago. So, there's a kind of a game tonight you may be aware of, so I want to make sure to get you guys back so you and I can watch the game. So, uh, anyway, uh, so I've been here two months. My, my wife, Candace Owens, is a dentist in Marble Falls. She's been here about four and a half years. We figured it'd be a good idea to live together. Uh, we have a 15-month-old, which kind of required that. And so I, I found this opportunity a couple months ago, actually six, seven months ago, with Dr. Grimshaw and, and Kevin Leeper, who's my boss, who unfortunately, or probably fortunately for him, is on vacation this week. So you guys get me instead of him to give the presentation, but he'll be back next week and he'll be very busy, I promise you. But uh, talk to them, hey, we're doing this new thing in Ball Falls, why don't you look at it? And uh, a few months later, I said, man, how can I not uh, move closer to my family and, and move into a, a great organization and actually move into what I consider probably one of the best communities in Texas. And um, so anyway, I've been asked to go over a few things about the hospital and the clinic tonight. And we'll have time for Q&A, a lot of time, until the game starts, but no, we'll have, <laughs> so, uh, Make sure you write your questions down so we can grab them at the end, okay? So um, it's appropriate, I guess, to quote scripture, and we're in a, a beautiful fellowship hall like this, I believe, and this is a proverb, I've been told, 1632, patience is a virtue better than strength. So I'm sure someone will check that and tell me if I'm right. I mean, so, uh, but patience is a virtue better than strength is, uh, is what it says in the good book. And uh, Kevin likes to say <laughs> that 
the hospital administrator 101 is patients are a virtue, they are our strength. And I think a lot, in a lot of instances it's true. Without patients, that we, don't, we don't have livelihoods, right? Without patients, we don't have folks to care for, we don't ha have ways to learn. And so really the reason why any of the folks here tonight you, you, you've met from Scott and White or um, are here is because of one thing, and that's to educate folks on how um, they can hopefully seldomly, but when they need to be a patient, become a patient in one of our facilities. So this is a picture of the hospital. And um, if, you could, if you notice, if you go by that, who's been by the site in the last three, four, five, nine, ten months? So most folks you've been driven by, you've seen concrete, you've seen steel. We opened for business on June the 3rd. And if you ask me June 2nd at midnight how we're going to do, <laughs> uh, I probably said something different. But I can tell you, looking, it's the third week open, and, you know, we've done a phenomenal job. We've hired some great staff. We have great physician leaders, and we've really uh, done a wonderful thing at opening the clinic. We are definitely not perfect, and I get feedback on a daily basis on ways to improve, and we encourage that, because the only way for us to get better and serve the community the way the community wants to be served is to get feedback. So I welcome um, feedback from y'all tonight, or friends you may know, because we want to continue to build something in the clinic that will transcend when, once the hospital opens in a, in a few months. So here's a reading at the campus. There are many more in the presentation, so we'll, we'll keep going. So this is our, what we consider our, our, our service area, our market area, and these are counties. We go as far north as San Saba. We have a clinic there, many, some of you may know. We go as far south as Blanco. In the middle is Johnson City and Cypress Mill. Uh, the epicenter, as we define it here, uh, is the mar south of Marble Falls, up the road here a little bit in 281. And there's about 80 some odd thousand people in the service area. It's gonna grow some in the next several years, but right now you look and say 80,000 people um, it's not a lot of folks, because usually um, you, but it, you look to, to build a hospital with, with two to 300,000 people is what you want and kind of to build a, a normal freestanding hospital. But if you look at it a little further, we'll see there's a lot of business here. There's a lot of folks who need care here, and they're going somewhere else. So the first thing this is we consider, I believe, uh, I don't see Cypress Mill in here. I think you guys are kind of lumped in probably to, um, to Johnson City. But we're opening a 46-bed hospital, and it'll have emergency department. People ask me that. It'll be a level four trauma center. We will have two cath labs. that We'll open one day one, and we'll have another shelled out, and we'll build it as volume dictates. We'll have four operating suites, which will basically be general operating rooms. So they'll, they'll do a variety of cases. Uh, we have, we may have mentioned seven specialists uh, here today. You met five, five of them tonight, I believe, and there's a few others that couldn't be here. Um, Dr. Thomas Eastman, orthopedic surgeon, couldn't be here tonight, and regrettably so. And Dr. Dave Chawa, our cardiologist, couldn't be here tonight. But we'll have, we have those seven today. We'll have 15 by the end of um, the summer-ish. Right, Dr. Shaw? 15? 15-ish, right? Okay. So we'll have <laughs> different specialists, and we'll go through them here in a second. Thank you. We'll, we have four endoscopy suites, sorry, three endoscopy suites to do things, um, procedures that go through your throat and the other area. Other end, I guess. Uh, we'll have four labor and delivery suites. So we will be, people ask, will you be delivering babies in a new hospital? Absolutely, we will. We'll have a, a nursery to care for those uh, newborns, and we will have a, really what you'll see perhaps in a second is a really state-of-the-art uh, mother and baby area. We'll have an eight-bed intensive care unit. One of the things we've learned is that patients are getting sicker they require, when they actually enter the hospital. A lot of times we find that the, we call it the acuity of our patients is higher and therefore they need a higher level of care when they're actually admitted to the hospital. And we're building a pretty, pretty large size ICU for a 46 bed hospital. And that's because we, we look at the population, we notice uh, the trends in the population, and look at you know, what the folks in the health plan, you know, say, okay, th these patients are sicker, they need better access to more critical care. Uh, cancer services today, if, uh, and I really do encourage y'all to take a tour of the, new of the new clinic. And I give those tours quite a bit. Kevin Leeper gives the tours, and really a lot of our physicians could give them as well, but uh, Brian can help arrange those. Uh, you'll have that on my email in a second. You can definitely email me, and I can help through my assistant arrange those as well. But you'll see on the third floor an, a, an infusion suite or a, a cancer center. Right? You'll, you'll see that we have six um, areas where we can receive infusion and other types of chemotherapy, and we have an area for consultation. And it, it is a cancer center. We don't have an oncologist yet, but we're working very hard on, on securing one. But I, you, you, that's what will happen, I guess, in the next four or five months. I, but if you look, there's a, kind of a space you'll see in a second when we go through the actual site diagram of a green field. 
And the goal is to build a freestanding, full-service cancer center to serve this area because we really, really need it. And you'll see more of that in a second. We'll definitely have um, diagnostic services inclu inclusive imaging. So a lot of folks, one of the complaints is that I have to travel a very, very long way to receive any advanced imaging. And uh, we, we, hear, we hear that, and we definitely want to bring that closer because those are tough tests to sometimes prep for, and it's tough to travel uh, for them as well. And we'll have an amazing, I'll tell you one thing, I, I came from Baptist, I may have mentioned that, and I've been floored by the technology investment that Scott and White makes in its facilities, whether it's from the, med the medical record, through Epic, just to the general, the x-ray, the equipment they put in their facility, our facility, I should say, is state of the art. And um, it's really, it really makes a difference for providers as they are uh, diagnosing and, and treating patients. It makes a big difference for patients in terms of time of diagnosis and, and time of care. And it's really something I hope you see as kind of one of the underpinnings of the new medical campus in a, in a few months. <clears throat> we get a couple questions that I want to make sure we, we clarify tonight because they, they definitely come up in the Q&A. The first one is, well, will there only be Scott and White doctors in the hospital? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, we will have an open medical staff, and what that means is any physician, regardless whether they're employed with Scott and White or not, has the ability to apply for privileges and be privileged to work in the hospital. Therefore, if you have a physician you, you've used for many years and he or she wants to use the hospital, we encourage that. We want that. Actually, it's a big part of our success. We'll also have our own specialists because we believe in the integrated model. It's one of the core tenets of Scott and White's philosophy, and uh, we believe in that. But at the same time, we're not, we believe more in not restricting access and giving folks access to the care they need from whom they choose to seek it from. Additionally, we accept all major insurance plans. And I know that occasionally I get the question, would you all accept Medicare? And the answer is absolutely. They're actually our largest payer. They're 45% plus of our business. Without Medicare, the doors are closed tomorrow. We accept it and we take a lot of it. There are a few plans we, we cannot contract with because we do have our own uh, Medicare Advantage plan, but it, it, they're, they're few. So the ch chances are we take in your form of payment, including cash. We, we, we take uh, however you care to pay for your care, uh, we, uh, we take that insurance. So someone asked me uh, earlier today, so uh, when's the hospital going to open, right? It's a punchline. And so I said, well, are you writing in pen or a pencil? Right? I mean, it's, and uh, so if you're writing in pencil, I will tell you the hospital will open and see their first patients in December of 14. If you're writing in pen, come see me afterwards and I'll tell you. But, not, but, but truthfully, it's end of 2014. We might bleed into 2015. I hope the reason why is we have a lot of rain. Because rain delays in construction, as you all well know, and we need a lot of rain. So um, late 2014, early 2015-ish, the hospital will open. Between now and then, a lot has to happen. Cement, steel, skin, I mean, there's a whole lot, as you all well know, that goes into building a facility um, like the hospital is going to be built. So, but cross your fingers, you'll see announcements come hopefully next several months that December of 2014 will be open for business. So I mentioned this earlier, I apologize, I got ahead of myself a little bit, but we have um, seven specialists on the ground today. Uh, you met them, like I said earlier. We have quite a few others that are lined up. I tell you, Dr. Grimshaw, uh, is definitely a, a recruiting, I don't know what you, uh, recruiting genius perhaps, worn out from recruiting. Yeah, that's probably more appropriate. So he, he literally uh, gets, and see, it's funny because someone asked me, don't you have a problem recruiting physicians to come to Marble Falls? I said, are you kidding me? It's where everyone takes them to live, right? So I mean, we've, we, he's done a great job not only finding high quality providers, but also um, showing them the vision. Because it all starts with the vision. We didn't really go over that at the beginning, but it all started with the vision that it started in this area with some business leaders several years ago. And really, I've been told by many it's been about a 10-year journey, right? No, 10, 10, 10 plus years. So we're on our second decade. So, and you know, the vision, selling the vision to these physicians and showing them some of the demographics we've gone over and showing them just how the community's already embraced this concept has really um, catapulted um, the specialist recruitment. So here they are. I could run through them, but I prefer just to let you kind of read and perhaps pause and ask any questions about folks you thought you'd see on the list, folks that you're surprised are on the list, and just get any comments. So have a, have a quick look. Yes, ma'am. Interns. Interns. That's a great question. We, good question. Do you want to cover that? You may do it. Uh, well, Go ahead. Uh, we do have uh, uh, additional plans to 
uh, bring in primary care doctors, and so that would be <coughs> infant medicine doctors, family medicine doctors, and pediatricians as well. Uh, for the most part, the model that we've been following is to have the primary care doctors be in the community where the patients are, so that they're not having to make a big trip into a specialty clinic in this building, and have our specialty doctors be in the specialty clinic where people can identify uh, those services. So yes, we do have plans to recruit additional uh, primary care, family medicine, internal medicine, and pediatrics, uh, and, and bring those to the communities where the people are. We have 30 right now. But we're recruiting more. Do you have a list of those, sir? Not on me, but uh, yeah, I mean, get you on. on the roof. <laughs> I don't know if they're on those brochures, but we can get you the list. So on the back of, of the, the page, looks like this, there is a list of all of our primary care clinics that are currently open. So we don't have a list of the doctors here, but you, you do have um, the actual name and phone number. And, you know, one question that, um, I, yes, ma'am. The currently is Scott and White Clinic in Marble Falls. Do you anticipate closing that? Uh, we do not. The only thing that will close in that primary care clinic is the after hours care. We'll be moving that to the new clinic effective mid-July. So we will have, we'll basically do our walk-in after hours clinic at the new clinic. And what that, basically, it's primary care physicians who will staff that in, in, in extenders, and that'll, patients will be seen on a walk-in basis. So for illness, acute illnesses or injuries or things that require immediate attention, folks can walk in and be seen. Yep. Good question. And one thing I'm surprised you didn't ask is, well, what about Johnson City, right? You guys are going to put a provider in Johnson City? And the answer is, uh, you saw it's part of our service area. It's right smack dab in the middle, quite honestly. And... Oh, we, we are working very hard to do that. And uh, I know that we um, had a provider that le left us uh, earlier this year. It was a difficult thing for the community, I understand. And we are working very hard uh, to figure out a way to serve the needs of this community. How that all plays out remains to be seen, but uh, we definitely want to be able to serve the primary care needs of the folks, um, both of you and the folks down the road, because it's important to have primary care offices and practices in the communities where folks live, right? So. You're probably the first to hear that, so we'll see how quiet we'll see how quiet it stays. I'm not sure. So. Let's move on. <clears throat> so people ask us, so what does a hospital mean to a community? And so we definitely want to, to discuss in the economic impact. This is very important for the, the Hill Country region as well as for um, as well as for the, out, the surrounding outlying areas. So job creation. Just for the hospital itself and the clinic, we'll have over 570 folks who will be employed. These are all these are new positions, so it's, it's net of the folks we currently have, I guess the number as of January 1st of this year. So 570 new jobs we'll bring into the community. The, the entire investment is $130 million. And <clears throat> that's a pretty substantial investment. And we, the way we finance that, quite honestly, is through operations. We earn money for uh, taking care of folks at other hospitals today. We, we have debt that's traded in the bond market, so we go out and seek uh, debt financing for a portion of our investment projects. And quite honestly, the rest comes from philanthropy. So each, each, um, each area is very important for us to reach that $130 million investment. And the point that I like to often make is that that money stays here, right? It doesn't go to Temple, it doesn't go, it doesn't go to Round Rock, it stays in this community to serve the folks in this community. Uh, another, another 100 indirect jobs will be created folks that will support the hospital, couriers, and things like that. Construction jobs. So uh, I grew up in the construction business, and my first job was literally digging ditches for my father in his business. So uh, I tell you, it's, uh, those are great jobs to have in the community. I know they're only here temporarily, but we'll have 500 direct jobs during the time the hospital's built. Quite a few of those folks may stay on, that they've worked in the clinic setting, some of the same contractors will be here. So really they've been here for longer than just the hospital build time, they've been here for almost three years. In this community, most of them live here, they consume here, and they, um, they provide a positive impact to the, to the community. So I, I talked about earlier about market demand, right? So it's a smaller population, you usually think for a hospital, but why, why do we want to be in, in this area in the middle of Marl Falls? And the reason why, there's a ton of hospitalization and inpatient needs for the community. And if you look at it, 
and really kind of, it's a very busy chart, but I'll point out a few things. 80% 80, 80 of the business in this area today, in terms of inpatient business, leaves the area. They go to Fredericksburg, San Antonio, Austin, Temple. Folks drive a very, very long way. It's, it's uh, in many, many times, quite in a lot, of, a lot of occasions, to seek care. And there's really no good option for a lot of folks close to home. So, and I tell my staff, because a lot of times I had to kind of boil things down from this well. I said, look, here, you don't need to understand that we have 80,000 people. You don't need to understand there are 7,000 admissions a year. All you need to know is if we convince half the folks who need care to stay here, we'll be just fine. That's, and that's all you really need to know. So that's our goal. Some folks want to travel for care. That's their choice. Some folks um, want to go to places. <clears throat> but our belief is, is that if we provide a superior product, folks want to stay close to home for care. So really, you understand that these are no probably no supplies to you, but cardiology is a very, uh, very high volume service line here. Pulmonary, which is the chest area, is a very high volume service line here. Orthopedics. Gastroenterology, again, which is the you know, this way and that way, right? And uh, general surgery. And people ask, are you doing OB? Absolutely. It's the sixth largest service line in the community. There's a lot of folks um, that are having children in this area, and, and a lot of them are leaving. And, and I can tell you, it's not the safest thing to, to tra have your, your wife or your partner travel when they're trying to deliver and, and get prenatal appointments and things. There's a lot of gaps in care that are created by that. So. All of these things and more we're going to offer in the new hospital because it's what the community needs. So here's the, the campus. It's, I should say it's a rendering of the campus. I'm sure it'll be different when, when, when they finally get here, all the, all the rocks moved. But generally speaking, the clinic to your right is open today. You, you've seen that. You've seen the big hole for the hospital. You'll get a better view of it when you come take a tour. And you'll be able to see kind of the dirt work that's been done. That green, let me show you the green patch of grass Right here, I mentioned, that is where we've kind of put a placeholder for a cancer center. A lot of folks ask, you know, when will you build that? And the answer is when we have the uh, either operating funds or the philanthropic funds to do so. Parking is always a big issue, and we have, I believe, 130 acres. Can you show us something close to that? 116, sorry. So 116, uh, do the Aggie math, I guess. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I went to Baylor. I went to Baylor. So I had to be careful. <laughs> So uh, anyway, yeah, so we'll have a, a lot of parking, and we'll, have, we'll definitely have a transmission system. People ask, well, that's a long way to walk. And so we'll have a way for folks to get to care quickly. The clinic, it looks pretty much like this. I think they did a pretty good job of, of matching the drawing, you know. And so you can, you can see it today. Again, take a tour and, and see it, and probably in greater detail than the picture would show you. The entire campus you can see as well, again, different rendering, but the clinic on the right, hospital on the left. They are connected via a corridor, and it's very important uh, because it helps our specialists get to their patients quickly. It helps patients get to their specialists quickly at the, when they're discharged from the hospital and need to go seek care. Right? So it's very important, that linkage between where the doctors practice in the clinic and where they actually practice in the hospital. Proximity is a very important thing uh, for us. I'm not going to go this in detail, uh, but this, trust me, this is, this is a clinic, the first floor. Uh, and, uh, and really, I'd love to take you guys on a tour you can see it. But basically, the one thing I will point out, the after-hours clinic will be right here. And so it opens July 15th, thereabouts. And so be, folks will go in and seek care here. We do have physical therapy on site as well. People ask us that. We have a lab on site. There's blood draws. We have radiology on site. We'll be doing uh, DEXA scans for bone densitometry. Excuse me. In the next couple of weeks, we have x-ray, we'll have ultrasound in the very near future, so we'll, we'll have some imaging services available immediately. The rest will come with the hospital. We'll have MRI. I should also mention MRI will be there at the, in, the, in the middle of July. So a lot of folks travel a very long way for MRIs today, but they'll travel a couple of minutes up the road uh, in a few weeks. Second floor, it's a lot of office, offices and a lot of exam rooms. Again, let's show you, take you on the tour. But basically, uh, the other thing I would, I guess I'll point out is that if you look at, when you, when you go up, there's centralized check-in at all three, uh, all three floors. And it's important because we get information, we are able to see patient, patients close to where they'll be seen. 
And if you look in exam rooms, you go on a tour, they all have a printer and they all have a computer. And, I, and the reason for that is when we, we go live with our new EMR, it's EPIC, our, our medical record system, you have to have a computer in every room. It does two things. It helps, helps the providers access the information quickly and go over that information with the patient. It also, the printer allows us to print information and provide it to the patient and educate them appropriately. So you'll see it's a small thing, but really when you're educating folks and helping to coordinate care, it's a very big thing. Emergency department, someone asked, will you have an emergency department? Absolutely. We'll accept ambulances. We'll accept helicopters. We'll accept walk-ins, crawl-ins. However you can get to us, we will take you. And we will take good care of you. <laughs> and that'll open with the hospital. People ask, will you open the emergency room first? The answer is no, we will not, because we want to make sure we have the full complement of services to serve. Because the worst thing we can do is, is see you, then have to turn around and send you somewhere else um, when, when, you think you, when you want to be seen at the hospital. So that, in a nutshell, is a presentation. I have my number here. Give me a call. My email address. Email me. And happy answering additional questions. And then what I want to do, Brian, have you said everything you need to say to kind of go over? Yeah, that's fine. What I also want to point out, you mentioned it a couple times, is uh, if you want to contact any of us, um, like the parameter said, it's always fun and good to go take a tour. Plus, it's kind of a first hand uh, feel of what's going on. You'll see where the hospital's coming up and, and all that. So, we do tours all the time. So, uh, definitely uh, welcome to come do a tour. I think. Honestly, the best way to do it is get a group together. I'll tour one or two, but I prefer to tour a few more than that. And we have a lot of folks who do tours, and I'd love to get a group together and show you guys around. And people ask, well, what time? I said, well, what time works for you. We don't want to interfere with patient care, so maybe some areas we can't go into, but uh, we'll do whatever time works for you. Is the, the after hours clinic where you would go, or do you suggest elsewhere? Or? I would suggest calling 911 if you're having chest pain and are there other types of symptoms, numbing, numbness, tingling, light, and that you can relate to, to a cardiac event. I would call 911, and the EMS providers will bring you to the most appropriate place. Okay, but I mean, should they come into the clinic? Or? We will not be accepting ambulances at the, at, the, at the clinic because we are a clinic, we're not an emergency department, and we're not licensed to take ambulances. Okay, so now you said a level four trauma center. Yes, ma'am. Okay, will there be some dedicated ER physicians that, that will be the only thing they do? Yeah. So, mm, not, a, not a, uh, an ER trauma doctor because all the ER doctors would take their trauma doctors. Uh, so, so for, but I do want to draw a distinction. So the the clinic that Bramer mentioned, the, the uh, acute care clinic or care now clinic, is the name it's going to have. Uh, that's going to be in the specialty clinic there over in the corner. That is scoped to take care of things that pop up, uh, you know, sprained ankle, possible fractured arm. You got a cold, uh, some something falling in your ear. Those kind of things that can take care of very well right there. Uh, something that's bigger. You come in, you're short of breath. You passed out three times. You're having a seizure. That's where more <coughs> hospital appropriate. Uh, to go, as Bramer said, call 911, the ambulance guys, the EMS folks will take you to the right place. Now, when the hospital's finished, so fall of 2014, uh, when the emergency room's there, uh, then absolutely they'll be able to take care of whatever kind of traumas you need. If it's something that exceeds the scope of that hospital, in one of those 10% of the cases, then they'll make the right arrangements and get you to the place where you need to go. So do you anticipate hiring? ER physicians? Yes, all the ones working in the hospital will be ER board certified physicians. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> you ever worked these out with board team before when the, when the uh, EMS people ask you what hospital they want to go to before you say Seton? I mean, uh, Scott and Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. 2014, yeah. <laughs> fall of 2014, and there will be lots of uh, announcements and media events. Uh, I'm on a first base, main basis with all of them. What will be the hours for after hours of urgent care? Urgent care hours will be 8 to 8, so 8 a.m. to 8 p.m on all days except Sunday, and on Sunday it's 11 to 5. Okay. Will the be able to work on B.C.? Oh, yeah. Especially <laughs> 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 Make sure you bring the D. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, ma'am. Develop what you think might be a possibility in Johnson City. So I'll, I, I give you the, I'm going to give you the, a real answer, not a, not a fake one. The real one is we want to be in Johnson City. We are working with um, several folks in the area to make that a reality. Now, I can't tell you what's going to be there because there's several options right now. We could bring, we could bring in a, a physician. We could bring in a PA. We could, let, we could help someone else do the exact same thing for the community. It's not affiliated with Scott and White. You know, our goal is to, is to make sure the community gets the care it needs, right? It really is. And whether we do that or we have a, a good partner do that or someone just does it independently and we support them for specialist care, all three of those are fine. But those are probably the three major options. And the reason why I can't tell you what we're going to do is I, I really don't know yet. Is that fair enough? But you are seriously considering which would help us focus to your hospital where... Yes, I would say more than seriously considering. I would say we're, we're tipping to fund it. So we're, 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 seeking, we're seeking dollars to make it happen. So that's more than serious. I know we're really small. Yeah. Well, actually, you're not as small as you think you are. It, it, so, because we look at data. A lot of, you saw all those numbers and things. We have folks that pour over the information. And this city, well, this service area, Johnson City itself, could support immediately one, one provider and perhaps two in the very near, near future. I want to thank you guys for your attention and hosting us and for dinner. I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much.